Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Welcome to the second in our series of interviews with Dr. Michael Snyder of Stanford University. In this video, Dr. Snyder will discuss with us the benefits and the methods of checking your health in depth when you are well, so that you can quickly detect and react to issues as they arise, leading to better health outcomes. With that, let me start the interview. So there's a number of commercial firms that do uh, DNA sequencing now. Do they provide enough uh, details for you to be able to ascertain that, or is it, I mean, it requires something like your lab? It really requires something like our lab. There's a, most of them, they do sequence your DNA, but they're looking for very specific things and very limited. So mm. I think to do it right, there, there's very few labs that can do it. There's one at Harvard, we like to think our lab. There are some that will look at a few genes. Uh, we, we do a much more comprehensive analysis, so it helps. What we do will be just much more careful and, and more comprehensive than what you'll get elsewhere. Uh, I will argue it's so early days. We don't, the way we interpret people's DNA now, uh, you know, it'll, be, it'll look pretty primitive compared to what we'll do 10 years from now as we get more information, but it's still powerful. Again, for of the first 70 people whose DNA we sequenced, 12 people, we learned something really, really important. Like one person had a BRCA mutation, which puts them at very, very high risk for breast cancer. Another person had actually a mutation of gene that said they should be at risk for certain kinds of cancer. And sure enough, they did a whole body MRI follow-up and they had early thyroid cancer, which we caught. And they could have that removed. They were able to save a lot of their thyroid. And, and so uh, that was very powerful because now they don't need thyroid replacement therapy. So we had a number of examples from the genome. We do this other technology with where we sequence people's RNA or do mass spectrometry, which is a uh, very advanced technology. It's actually similar to what they do in the airports when they were trying to sniff out uh, you know, bomb chemicals. They do swipes. They put that swipe into a mass spectrometer to try and detect uh, the, these chemicals. They're very, very sensitive instruments. So we use the same instruments, but now we're profiling people's blood and all the proteins and all the metabolites. And so we're really getting a much more complete picture of people's health state and how that's changing over time. And, and that's why it's powerful. We'll see different things, we'll tease out the different other items. And so, um, you know, it's very, very expensive to do this. We've taken, um, you know, it is a research project in our lab and we've sort of worked out the proof of principle. We kind of get what technologies are most powerful genome sequencing is as are a lot of these other detailed measurements. And so now I'm, I'm totally conflicted. People ask me, well, how are you gonna scale this to millions of people? And the answer is we founded a company because I think, so again, I'm totally conflicted, but we think this is a way to do it at scale. It's still pretty expensive right now, $3,500 per, per visit. But mm -hmm. uh, we do a very deep profile on people. We also do whole body MRI, the company's called QBio. And we've already, same thing from the first 100 plus people, we've discovered some pretty important things. We caught someone with early pancreatic cancer, another person with early ovarian cancer, another with early prostate cancer. And it was the same things. It wasn't any one technology. Sometimes it was the imaging. Sometimes it was imaging plus a few biochemical markers. It would be very, very powerful. Like if you see a certain blood marker going up, it can be evidence of a precancer. Uh, and in every case, we caught it at very early stage before people are symptomatic. So we could do some, we could intervene early, which is a big deal because for a lot of diseases, if you intervene late, it's too late, uh, especially in cancer, it may have already spread. But if you intervene early, you can sometimes do surgery or other kinds of corrective action to better mitigate the disease. Right. So it sounds like this would be so part of this would be a one-time only, like I guess the, D the, the DNA sequencing, but there would be part of it like the MRI scanning that would be something that you might want to do every year or so. That's correct. Yeah, we, we don't know the right frequency, but we're thinking every six months. Right. Uh, we like to do every three months to get started. Uh, and the reason for that is we're trying to find these things that might be growing quickly. So that, what you say is 100% correct. The, the genome you'll do once, because that doesn't change on people's DNA. But the other parts where we do deep measurements, we want to follow them over time. And the reason we want to do that is we want to find the delta, as we call it, the change in mm -hmm. people's molecules. And that's very, very powerful because we all, 
are very, very different in our molecular profile. And actually, even in our physiology, you may not realize it, but, um, you know, even people's oral temperature is very, very different. You're told that your, your temperature is 98.6. But if you actually measure people, it turns, off, turns out that, first of all, that number is wrong. The median number is 97.5. But more importantly, it's a, hot, it's a range. Some people, the, it's what's called the 25th quartile, 25% of people are 94.6, and 75th quartile is 99.1. So what that means, that for their normal, healthy baseline te temperature from just putting, sorry, this is Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd have to put that in the centigrade. It's actually, yeah, it's under 37. So anyway, the point out of all this is in today's world, if your normal temperature is 94.6, say that's your normal healthy temperature, you go to a doctor and they measure 98.6 Fahrenheit, you're up four degrees, they'll tell you you're healthy. Everything's great. It's wonderful. You know, what are you doing here? Go home. But I guarantee if you're up four degrees over your baseline, you're sick. That's not a healthy state. So this is part of our mantra. Everybody's healthy state's a bit different, and so you need to know that. So you can see the shift, and that's how you catch disease early. That's the power. It's the longitudinal aspect as well. And so just to make that point, some of the people like the pancreatic cancer case we caught, that was a case where we were scanning and we saw uh, um, a change, and that's what tipped us off. And in fact, again, in today's world, most physicians will tell you, you absolutely should not do whole body MRIs, because if we scan you, we will see nodules in you and that will freak people out. And my point is, that's the wrong view. Yes, we all have nodules, but the question is, are any of them growing? And right. so that's what counts. So if we scan a woman, she, I guarantee she will have nodules in her ovary, men have them in their prostate, for sure. They're small, and, and I have one on my spine, and it's not changing. We all have them. But the key is if one starts growing, you want to catch that again at its earliest time. And in today's world, it's absolutely discouraged to do whole body MRI if you're healthy because it freaks the doctors out. And my point again is that that's not the point. <laughs> it's not whether you have nodules. Do you have any growing nodules? And the only way you find that is to do these longitudinal profiles. So we recommend probably scanning twice initially, just to see what's going on, then every six months or so. But we don't still know the perfect number of times you should get measured. So that's one of the things we're gonna find out, like how often should you get measured for certain things because what's the frequency? But again, we can see people's personal trajectories, especially on glucose, and have a pretty good estimate where they're heading towards. So again, the big mantra is that these deep profiles on people really tell you your health state, and following them longitudinally tells you how you're changing. So again, we can catch disease at its earliest possible time. Right. So if we, if we kind of look at the devices, so if somebody wanted to, I mean, because this, this, uh, this technology is something that will be available kind of in the future, like for normal people. It's not well, again, we spun off a company, so part of it's there now. But yes, it's not generally accessible. We're hoping to make it more accessible by showing it works. And that it's actually, in some areas, it should save a lot of money. There's been nice economic modeling around, for example, the cardiovascular space. That sequencing people at risk is actually a good thing, because if you can then really see who is strongly at risk, you can you know, be on the lookout for that and catch it early. So, so in certain areas, there, you can show it's cost benefit because if somebody gets a stroke and winds up a long-term disability, that's very, very expensive. So providers kind of shouldn't, I think they should know who's at risk, so they'll work harder to keep people healthy. I actually have a very different view. I actually think people should pay you to get your genome sequence and some of these other things mm. because I think you'll take better care of your health if you know what you're at risk for. Right. Yes. But I don't see, don't mm -hmm. see the um, insurance companies going for that just yet. Yeah, no, I have a very different view of the world uh, because, yeah, I, the system's broken in my mind at so many different levels. This whole idea that you measure people when you're ill rather than mm -hmm. when they're healthy and we don't do enough to keep people healthy. And that's really how we should be focused. And there's no financial, especially in the US, there's no financial model to keep people healthy. Uh, it really is the head of a hospital once told me here, 
I said, Mike, nobody pays me unless they walk in the door. And they don't. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Since everybody's healthy state is a bit different, deep profiling our health status seems a good way to detect diseases early. We think that rather than one size fits all, preventative and personalized medicine are the future of the health industry. We hope that the technology can be scaled and be more available to the general public in the near future. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.